Okay, I'm finally about to fix this passenger seat and the issue with this seat is that whenever I want to move the seat forward or backward, it only moves on this side. So as a result, it's making the seat seat uh, twist this way. Uh, so for, as an example, so I'm trying to move the seat forward. Okay, only this side is moving up. If I want to go back, only this side is moving back, not that side. So it's not linear. And uh, the issue for that is that this thing here, which is connected to the motor, which is in the middle of the seat, and this going to the motor on this side, and the other end is connected to the track. And that, whenever the motor moves forward, backward, it'll move the seat um, forward or backward. And there's also another piece of this on the other side, but it's a longer piece, has the same function. It just um, helps the seat move forward and backward and this piece you I don't think you can buy it there may be some sort of um, aftermarket parts maybe Aliexpress I think I saw they have different lengths but this one I got from, from a junkyard and it was free um, I, I mean if you have to pay anything it may be about a couple of bucks the most I think so for me to replace this I have to unbolt uh, this nut here which is a 30 millimeter there's one here and also on the other side but the good thing about this one here is that it's on this side so it's facing towards the door so it's a little easier to um, remove and so here I have a quarter inch and then I'm going to just undo this wasn't that tight I guess so we'll do the both sides this knot and the other side and I've actually putting off I've been putting off this task this pro DIY project for a while uh, mainly because I had a trouble finding that part and um, luckily I was able to come across this part of the junkyard and uh, I initially went there to get headlights for my car, for Bison and headlights. But if you've ever been to a, a junkyard and looking for those headlights, those go really fast. So I've never have had luck to buy those from junkyard, but I was able to get them from from Facebook Marketplace, and you won't believe how much I pay for those. So the, the reason uh, I paid well. Um, I paid $500 plus shipping, so maybe about $550 for both headlights, passenger side and driver side, both in good condition, uh, and you know, Bizen on adaptive head headlamps. And usually those go for at least, I think, it's five, six hundred dollars a piece on eBay or on other, um, you know, places used. New is about, I think, at least thousand dollars or so. And uh, so when I bought this car, sorry, I'm just, since this is taking a long time, I'm gonna catch up of on what's going on with this car, what I've done to it so far. So okay, so talking about the headlights, I bought this car in 2007, and the uh, uh, passenger side headlight, which I found out later after I bought the car didn't have original uh, adaptive headlights you only had it on a driver's side and I was getting this message in my infotainment system and also in the, in the gauge cluster saying that uh, there's an issue with adaptive headlamps and uh, I thought it would maybe with just like a module or something like that but it turns out it didn't have original headlight I guess maybe this car had a little, maybe a fender bender and um, they had to the original light broke so they went a cheaper route of replacing uh, it with a just a non non uh, adaptive headlamp so and i always the reason why i went to uh get the actual headlight the adaptive one is because i got really tired of seeing the message pop up all the time and uh so, so uh, I, I decided to look for those headlights at the junkyard 
and um, and I have, have, haven't had luck so bad in Facebook Marketplace. So long story, story short, those lights work perfectly now. I get, I get no error messages in the uh, infotainment or the gauge cluster. So I'm really happy about that. And I've done that maybe about in the last three weeks, finally. Uh, okay, so this nut has been removed. And the other one here is, well, the socket is a little too deep. So you need to maybe find a wrench, 30 mm wrench, or a shorter socket. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So here I have a 30 mm ratcheting wrench, uh, which will work much easier instead of actually having a regular wrench. So make sure I have this set up correctly. All right, so here we go. So I'm gonna do the same thing, just undo this bolt as well. Oops, sorry. Uh, sorry, you guys, if you can't see what I'm doing exactly, it's a little tight in here. Much easier having a ratcheting um, wrench. All right. Oh, did I lose it? Uh, let's get that sound. Lost the nut. Okay, so once you remove both of those uh, um, things, look at these these nuts and bolts. You just lift the seat up, and it gives you more clearance. So, the other part that I'm supposed to replace goes here, and, sorry, I'm gonna have to, sorry, it's really hard to explain what I'm doing when the space is a little tight. So I was able to remove the remaining piece of uh, the broken part, so let's see. I already had removed the other piece uh, before, the other end, but see how this one has been worked. Looks like this has been fixed by previous owners, so it seems like they have had the same issue. So they may have just sort of like a glued or welded these pieces together. Because look how it looks here, it's unusual. But, okay, so this piece is out. So, Okay, so here is the piece that I need to install, but it's gonna be kind of tight. Sorry guys, if you can't see, I barely have okay, enough room to work with here. So let me just kind of sort of walk you through what I'm thinking about doing. I'm going to try to stick this end into the motor here and then sort of bend this piece into the other side. But before I attach it to the other side, I need to make sure that both of these tracks are aligned, otherwise the seat will be crooked. And uh, so I have a ruler here, which um, I can measure how far the seat is from the tracks. So this one here, just an example, is like one and a half inches approximately. And the other side is less than one inch, so I have to move this back or forward an inch and then install the part. So it's about that much, I think, another side too. Yes, that's that's good. So now I can go ahead and try to install this. I'm gonna set the camera down, but like I said, what I'm trying to attempt now is uh, stick this one end into the motor and bend the other end into the uh, slot for the track. And I'll let you know 
how this plan works how the, how this plan works out just a moment Alrighty, so it actually wasn't that bad it took a little bit of wrestling to get the other end to the other side but you know it, it's manageable i wish i could have showed you this on uh camera but it was just so tight to uh to uh it's pretty tight space to work with and especially <laughs> filming while working um so i have to hold the camera with one hand and uh yeah so the good thing is it's in and now let's see if both sides move so as you remember this side moved before and this side didn't so I'm going to move this and just watch this side here. Let's see if he moves. Perfect. Nice. And let's just measure, make sure it's the same distance. Let's go to inches. So it's about three so this is centimeters. Okay. So it's about one inch, pretty much exactly. And one inch pretty much exactly two one inch here almost and one here now oh, this is pretty easy okay so the next thing is you just put everything back together i'm going to put the seat down here and oh it's so hard filming with one hand and Okay, so I now have my GoPro mounted to my head. This way you guys can see what I'm doing. I mean, this is fairly simple. So this end here goes on the inside. So inside of this thing here. But first we're going to put this down, align with the hole and guide this bolt through, through that. Uh, oops. Oh well. Okay, so here we go. Let's try again. Uh, okay. So, so this thing kind of moves. You can adjust it. So that way you can guide it to the hole. Here we go. Make sure it's all the way in. And we're just going to just slightly just tighten it with our fingers. Okay. And I'm going to use this to just tighten it a little bit. wrench is amazing I got this wrench I think, it's the last, I think this is the last tool I bought I always like having a few of these wrenches I have a 10 millimeter 8 millimeter I think 12 and 13 and 14 also so I've got one of the more common sizes all right so let's go back here I'm gonna do the same thing hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing, I'm just putting back these bolts. Uh, okay, so so again, this arm can be sort of moved back and forth, and that makes it easier to kind of adjust the holes. Uh, all right, so actually, it's all the way in, and then put the nut on there. Whenever I film with a GoPro on my head, when it's mounted on my head, it's always a hit or miss. Because uh, I don't know how, if it's getting things in the, in the shot. Alright. So I'm gonna tighten this pretty snug in the other side and we'll be done. We can sort of test the seat. This is good. I don't want to over tighten it, then we have a big problem if we strip the nut. Okay, good enough. 
All right, moment of truth. Let's see. Perfect. Oh, found a extra screw. I wonder where this came. I wonder where this came from. Okay, so I think we need to put in the key so we have some more power. Perfect. Nice. Great. Well, that was very easy and satisfying getting the thing fixed. Finally working. Yeah, so if you guys like this video, I really hope you found this helpful. And so this is a common problem. I want to make a video about this and uh, hopefully helps you guys. And uh, I know it's pretty annoying, you know, not ha not being able to adjust the uh, seat, especially if it's a driver's seat that you're using all the time. But yeah, hope you guys like this video, found it helpful. Um, if you found it useful, helpful, like I said, you know, leave a like and if you'd like to be notified of other upcoming videos uh, on my beetle over there, uh, hit subscribe button. And I think the next video that I'll do will be probably removing the motor from the beetle because it's misfiring on cylinder two and I think I need to uh, rebuild the heads on that side because I think the, the exhaust valve on cylinder two is stuck. So again, hope you guys like this video and always appreciate all the likes and subscriptions and I'll do my best to upload videos more often now. Hopefully I have more time. But until then, I'll see you guys later and have a good day.